All right, guys, we're out here in the shop working some fur. Uh, just want to say welcome to episode two of So You Want to Be a Trapper. I had a couple buddies reach out to me last night and explain to me, you know, you forgot a step. And they're right, 100% I did. Uh, trying to get out of that that muscle memory. You know, I've been trapping for a couple years now, so there's things that, that I do or that trappers do in general that they don't necessarily know that they're doing it. Uh, so I'm gonna have to slow this series down, but one thing I wanna talk to you about, what should have been the first episode is, why are we trapping? What is, what is the importance of it? What's the significance of it? Uh, there's two main things that stick out to my mind. Uh, the first one being fur is a renewable resource. Okay, this is a, a product that when it goes to a landfill, it can break down just like anything else. But, you know, we make all kinds of garments, uh, coats, hoodies, uh, coyotes are a big liner in parkas right now. Overseas in Russia, raccoon coats were huge up until recently. I mean, they were just, almost every, popu every family owned a raccoon coat or two. It just, that's what they used to keep warm for the middle class. Uh, you know, your upper class has beautiful bobcat coats that sell for uh no joke tens of thousands of dollars for the best so you know most of our most of our raccoons or mink or muskrat or anything fur bearing related is getting turned into some kind of a garment uh not all of it you know some of it's novelty stuff but there's a lot of it that's turned into something to keep somebody warm somewhere and you know the replacement to that is artificial fur which is petroleum based. Okay, petroleum based fur, you know, it's made from fossil fuels. Uh, not exactly the most renewable resource by any means. It's gonna take years and years to, to get that type of stuff back. But uh, that, that's a huge thing, you know. It, even here in the US, it's not as popular as it once was, but people st still wear fur. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's something that many people across the country where uh, it's just not huge in the United States right now as you know our country kind of transitions a little bit but hopefully one day we'll bring that back start getting more people in the US to wear fur but anyway not trying to get too far off subject here but uh, the second reason that is very important of why we trap what is the significance and that is to maintain populations where I live in the Midwest our raccoon populations are insanely high. Uh, I've been watching them build for the last couple years, and it's just a matter of time before the inevitable happens. And why I say the inevitable happens, I'll say this, like I've said in many videos, Mother Nature is one cruel SOB. Uh, she comes through with diseases. Uh, with raccoon, one of the main ones is distemper. And I've seen raccoons that have distemper. Uh, it's a very slow, slow, painful death. I mean, it's just, they can't eat. Their eyes are all matted up. They're, they're literally just bones covered in skin. There's no fat to the animal at all. It's a very slow death that can take up to weeks to finally dispatch the animal. And as as trapping has evolved over the years, you know, we've trapped this country for hundreds of years now. It's not cruel like PETA and other organizations make it out to be. Uh, there's been rules and regulations as far as traps and equipment and stuff. All these traps are anymore are a handcuff. Uh, no different than if you were to do something stupid, get in trouble and get your butt thrown in jail. All these are is a handcuff designed to hold the animal there. There will be certain certain circumstances that you know it doesn't always go exactly how it's supposed to and you'll have a few uh, bad things happen but these animals these traps are not designed to break anim break animals legs they're not I don't even think there's any states now that I know of that have teeth traps that dig in uh, these traps are designed to hold the animal that's just it nothing more it's it's really no different than that hog farmer you know, that sends a few thousand hogs off every month to be butchered. Or that cattle farmer. We're harvesting animals 
to use them. Uh, you know, I, I very firmly disagree with killing an animal for no reason. Uh, you see people up to no good all the time out doing stupid stuff, but you know, as a trapper, it's our responsibility, you know, if we're gonna take that life, to utilize it in some way uh, that's you know I in my videos in the past you've seen me let very very small raccoons go that have zero value uh, and I'll be the first one to see a family of raccoons in the spring you know walking through a field and just watch and enjoy them because it's I love seeing nature and you know it's just like a real deer hunter you know some people look at him as a cruel terrible person but he loves seeing little fawns born in the in the spring and it's not of the thought of oh i can kill that later that's not it he just loves the animal and by loving the animal and the sport you know we are controlling the populations we're keeping that that balance of population in check uh someone best explained it to me here a while ago the raccoon populations they build here and build and build and build until mother nature comes up with a disease such as distemper, and it'll plummet. Uh, it's no joke. You'll take out 80% of the population in two months. It's just insane. And then as it hits that bottom, it's going to take two or three years, maybe five, to start growing back up, growing back up. And guess what? It just repeats itself. As trappers, you know, that population only gets to about here. It doesn't get up to here because we trap some animals, and it stays more of a plateau. So when that distemper or something comes through, it doesn't spread as easily and drop down to here. You know, you might have a little bit of a drop, but it keeps it more of a of an equal, even layer, I guess. Uh, and that's just, you know, since the Midwest became full of crop fields and stuff, the population's just exploded. So it's, it's up to us to keep them in check. You know, it, like I said, there's so many terrible ways for these animals to die. I would almost promise you this, there's no animal here that dies of natural causes. Everything's either hit by a car, whether it dies instantly or runs off and dies three days later, it gets eaten by an animal, uh, diseases. Trappers are by far the most humane way for an animal to lose its life, if that makes sense. And you know, we're not, we're not going out there and taking every animal by any means. It, there's so many of them that we're just keeping that population in check. That's all we're doing. So, uh, like I said, you know, we kind of got ahead of ourselves with that last video talking about traps and what you need for raccoons. I'm going to really slow down and take my time on this because I think a lot of people that are new or beginning in the sport can, can learn from this. So we're going to back up a little bit, you know, talk about that. Next episode, I'm going to talk about the raccoon's behavior a little bit. Uh, that's going to going to really play a big important factor into where you're trapping and to how you're trapping so anyway guys uh we'll catch you later